Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this will be the third and final installment in what has become a short series on receiving satellites. I had a couple of my Patreon supporters ask me to detail how I automate uh, capturing the satellites between GPredict and GQRX, the SDR receiver software I like to use. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there is a function built into GPredict Oh, and a side note, um, I had somebody say they couldn't find the Windows installer for GPredict. Um, I took a quick look, I didn't find it either, but I have seen videos of people using it under Windows. So I know it's out there, I'm just not sure where. And I don't run Windows, I don't run Mac, I'm all Linux and open source here, so... Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's out there, I've seen videos of it being used. So, if somebody finds it, um, leave it in the comments and I'll pin it to the top of the list. Uh, and in fact, if you find a Mac version, do the same, and I'll, I'll uh, put a heart on the comment so it shows up at the top. Uh, so anyway, um, automation. There is a module in GPredict that lets you automate control of external devices, like radio receivers, where you could use it to adjust the frequency in real time to track the Doppler shift of the uh, satellite as it goes overhead. Uh, and then there's also facilities for having it control um, servo motors and rotate beams to track satellites. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, that takes a lot of hardware, and uh, I'm sure there's other guides out there if you're interested in that. But what I use it for is I use it for automating capture of satellite passes. Uh, so, like, as an example, the ISS this week... Uh, was being used to transmit some slow scan TV images by the cosmonauts on board for Russia and Europe. Uh, so I hoped they'd be transmitting when they were over us and I wanted to capture all the passes and see if I could catch an image. Um, and I didn't, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I've got some, uh, some media for you there. So anyway, uh, GPredict can automate controlling a radio for tracking um, satellite frequency. That's in a lot of satellite tracking programs, but let's uh, let's go look at GPredict and how that works with GQRX under uh, Linux. Okay, if I want to have GPredict remotely control GQRX, the receiver, I have to configure that. And here's how we do it. So, these little icons right here at the top, remote control via TCP, that's networking, and configure remote control settings. If we click on that, we can see that GQRX is going to listen on TCP port 7356. That's a networking port uh, locally on this, on this machine. So it'll listen for network connections from other programs running on the same machine on 7356. Make a note of that. And then this icon here enables that, that remote control. If I click that, it goes dark. Now GQRX is listening on that network port. So let's go over here to GPredict, all right? Uh, we'll go to Edit and Preferences, and here is a module called Interfaces. I'll click on that, and you can see I've already added it here. But what you would do is you would hit Add New. You'd put in a title, GQRX. Host, local host means on this machine, and then we would just change this port number to 7356, same as GQRX. And that's all we need to do there. And we hit OK. And then that will add this entry. So now GPredict can talk on that same network port to control our radio. All right, now we'll come up here to this little drop down and we'll go to radio control. And this is the magic module here. All right, um, you can have it control both an uplink and downlink frequency. Um, I'm just going to be worried about downlink because we're just receiving for the ISS. Uh, settings, device, this is where I choose that entry that I added, GQRX. Up here on downlink, I'll set the frequency that I want to monitor. So I want to monitor 145.8, which is the downlink frequency for the ISS slow scan TV stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll hit engage here, and that will start talking to um, GQRX. 
and then I'll choose the satellite that I want to track, and in this case I want to track the ISS, and I'll hit track. Now it's going to, even though the satellite is basically on the other side of the Earth right now, it's still doing the Doppler calculations based on its relative velocity to my location, and it's adjusting the frequency here. And indeed, if we go back here to GQRX, you can see that the frequency is being adjusted in real time to account for Doppler shift. There's nothing being received right now because, you know, as I said, the satellite is over Europe, and, or the ISS is over Europe, and it's going to have to go well all the way around before it comes past Kingman again. But uh, I might not be sitting here ready to hit the trigger, so this is why I'm automating. What's going to happen when we get acquisition of signal, AOS, in one hour and five minutes uh, is this module will send a command to GQRX to start audio recording down here, record audio. That'll automatically trip and it will record until the loss of signal and then it'll turn off recording. So GQRX will now automatically record the pass as it goes by. Um, I am going to unsquelch the audio and I have it turned way down. Okay. Um, this gain, by the way, is just like a volume control out of the program into the system. Uh, this is not going to affect the recording level. The recording is going to be uh, right up to uh, 0 dB. It's going to be a full um, uh, audio recording of the incoming pass and any audio that's, that's demodulated. So I can turn this gain down so I don't have to listen to that for hours and just leave it alone. And what's going to happen now is every single ISS pass that occurs today, GQRX is going to automatically record and create an audio file. So uh, in about an hour, I should get a recording as the uh, ISS goes overhead. Now while this is controlling um, the program, it's only adjusting frequency. I can make other changes. I could change the filter width if I wanted to. Um, I could change the mode if I wanted to. I say I wanted to record upper sideband for whatever reason. Boom. It's, you know, I can do all these changes. You can see the frequency is still cycling. So I can set up the receiver however I want it to be uh, before the pass and then just forget about it and uh, it'll be ready to go and it'll record every single pass of the uh, ISS until I until I unclick this track button and we're fully automated to record uh, multiple passes so we'll see if I get lucky and if they are transmitting slow scan TV when they pass overhead and I know that they're going to be FM and I know that my filter width has to be 20k so I'll open that up to there, 20.2K filter width. So I am all ready to record, and we'll just leave it alone and come back in an hour and verify that it's actually recording the pass, and hopefully they're transmitting. So that's pretty cool, huh? Now, I did mention earlier that um, I was going to try to capture some slow scan TV images from the ISS. Uh, I was successful, but not directly. Uh, they were not transmitting when they were passing overhead. I captured several passes and heard nothing but silence. However, I did, during their window, uh, notice that they were going to pass over Europe a couple of times. And so I went ahead and, uh, as we saw in a couple of videos ago, you can use web SDRs to capture uh, the NOAA satellites. Well, you can also capture the ISS when it's transmitting. Let's go look at that. Uh, the other area that I use this functionality uh, in is with uh, NOAA weather satellites. And uh, I can see here that in about 10 minutes I've got a pass of NOAA 18 coming up. So I'm going to set up to receive that. And uh, 
what we do is, well, first off, let me stop this track since we didn't get anything from the ISS, and I'll stop the recording. Normally, it automatically stops the recording at the end of the pass. I'm just interrupting it here. So, for NOAA weather satellites, I know I need a pretty wide filter of about 40K, so I'm going to widen my filter out to 40K. And uh, all we need to do is set frequency. Now, NOAA 18 is at 137.9125, uh, so we'll go 137.9125. Five. And you can see it's changing up here automatically as I'm changing it here. I'm still engaged. So this module is still in control of GQRX. All right. Let me find my... There it is. Oops. Ah, I screwed it up. Ah, I screwed it up again. 137.9125. One, two, five is what I want to monitor, and it's right there. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. We're set to 40K FM. Everything here should be correct. All I need to do is select NOAA 18 as the satellite that I'm tracking. This list, by the way, will show you all the active satellites that you have uh, over on GPredict. So if we come back here to GPredict, and I go up here to uh, configure. Oh, I can't be configured while radio controls in operation. Okay, well, we'll close that. Configure. Here's my list of available satellites over here, and I have added with this arrow the ISS and the NOAA satellites. So I've just got NOAA and the ISS. All right, let's go back to the radio control module. Radio control. And we'll reset this, uh, 137.9125 for NOAA 18. I'll engage. And if I hit track, well, wait, satellite, NOAA 18, track. Acquisition of signal in seven minutes. And you can see the frequency up here is changing as this is doing calculations for Doppler. And we should be all set to go. All we need to do now is just wait. I'll come back uh, when the pass has started so we can see the uh, Doppler shift tracking the frequency. Okay, 20 seconds to go till the beginning of the pass. I'm not going to touch anything on the windows. I'm just going to put my mouse pointer out of the way. Maybe use it to point at things if you can see it. Now let's turn this up so we can hear the static a little bit. There we go. And there it goes. It started recording as NOAA 18 comes above the horizon. And we should start to see it in the waterfall. Yep, there it is. Starting to see the little faint lines. You see them? And they're going to suddenly get stronger as it gets above the mountains to the north. Here it comes. That old familiar sound of the NOAA satellites. Okay. So we're recording. We're right on the center frequency. The Doppler shift calculation going on over here and controlling GQRX. I'm going to go fast forward so we can watch the pass and what you can watch is you can watch this signal or the frequency shifting and following um, the pass due to the Doppler effect. So here we go, fast forward. Okay, so we're near the end of the pass. Now, what you should have been able to see quite clearly in the fast forward was the 
receiver frequency, this little red line, tracking the signal as it uh, shifted down in frequency due to Doppler effect. And we should have a nice clean recording. Now watch the record button down here. In five seconds, that should switch off. Two, one, and there we go. It stopped recording. So you can see that it automatically recorded the entire pass. Now I could leave this sitting on NOAA 18 and every time that satellite passes overhead today, I would get a recording of it automatically. Let's go and, by the way, just let's just go ahead and look and see what we uh, what we captured. Okay, I've got NOAA apt here. I'm going to go and load my file. All right, I've selected the file that GQRX recorded. I'll hit decode. And we'll go over here to processing and we'll hit process. And there's our image. Oh, I gotta rotate this. And we'll put a map on it. And there we go. There's the US. I'm around here. And we got a real nice clean pass from the satellite. A little bit of noise at the beginning, a couple of little fades there. I'm using my Slim Jim antenna, by the way, which is cut for two meters, but as you saw in the previous video, works well enough. So there you go. I hope you found that useful and informative, and this will conclude my three-part series on receiving satellites uh, with Linux. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the next subject, whatever that'll be. I haven't decided yet, but whatever it is, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.